What's happening everyone? My name is Phil with PrecisionLED.com and today we're really excited. We have a brand new 2014 4Runner that will be showing you step by step how to install LED into your lights. Now this 2014 is a 5th generation 4Runner and that means it's compatible with North American 2010 vehicles and up and for the international market you may have a 2009 model of this generation that will work. We're going to be doing the map lights on the interior, the dome lights in the rear, the trunk lights, license plate lights, courtesy door lights, and these courtesy turn signal puddle lights here, um, converting them to new precision LED premium LED packages. Now, before we get started, we would really love it if you would like or subscribe to the channel. It does inspire us to make additional videos, just knowing that the people out there are watching and liking what we're doing. So, let's go ahead and get started. We're going to be using a Precision LED Premium LED Interior Lighting Package for this 4Runner installation. Now each one of these packages, based on what you order uh, from the website, is going to come with individually labeled bags for the type of LEDs that you'll be replacing inside the vehicle, along with three free trim tools that you'll be using. You can see like one of them here. You'll be using these trim tools to remove the panels safely in the vehicle uh, to get it done the right way. For the map lights, as you can see, we've already installed one of the premium LEDs and we just have this one halogen on the passenger side left to complete. You'll be using the flat end of this serrated knife tool. You're going to wedge in closer to this side where the control panel is. Just get in between the panel and pull back on it. Once you have part of it out, you can just work your way around and you can remove that panel. As you can see, the points of contact were here, here, and here. Now, access to this halogen bulb is a little bit difficult for you to get uh, with just your fingers. What we recommend is for you to just take a piece of tape and tape to the halogen bulb, and then pull the bulb out with the piece of tape. It makes it a lot easier to grip and a lot less effort for you in the long run, just like that. Once we have that halogen bulb out, we're going to be replacing it with the LED. Now these LEDs in particular are not polarity specific, so whether it goes in one way or the other, they're still going to work. All you have to do is make sure that these metal pins are facing the edges and that they're gonna make contact with the leads inside the housing. Once you have that bulb in, just go ahead and manually test to make sure that works. And then we're going to go ahead and reinstall this panel. Now this panel has one end that has a little bit larger of a clip here. This goes to the side facing the door and it goes in first. And then the rest of them click into place, just like that. We're going to work here on the vanity mirror lights. As you can see, this one's halogen still. Still again using the flat end of that serrated knife tool. Now, you're going to wedge in from the side closest to the door, so this way. And the reason you have to do that is because there's a clip on one side, but the other side is the metal wire or the wire connector. So if you try to remove it from this side, you're going to end up breaking this piece here. So you just want to be very careful. On the passenger side, it's still facing to your left. So when you do the passenger side, just make sure you're also coming in from this side as well. The reason I'm wearing this glove is just because it has some rubber grips on it. it. Makes it easier for me to pull these bulbs out in tricky situations and it keeps the car a little bit cleaner. But Helden bulb just comes out. We put our new premium bulb in. Now once it's in the socket, just want to make sure that it works or reinstalling back into the headliner. Now this thing is going to make a small clicking sound when it gets into place. So just listen for that, just like that. And you're done. Here we have the courtesy door light. Uh, this door light is the same for each one of the doors on the forearm. So both the front uh, passenger and driver's side door, as well as the rear passenger and driver's side door. We're using the pointed wedge tool here. We're just going to insert from the side closer to the interior of the trim. 
and wedge this bolt out. As you can see, this is the clip that's holding it in place. Now, to get access to this bulb, we actually have to take this little assembly apart. We're gonna show you how to do that um, from our workbench. We do want to unclip the wire lead from the connector so we can show you how to work on this. For the courtesy door light, we need to separate this clear plastic lens from the gray housing to get access to the bulb inside. In order to do that, we're using the pointed wedge tool and there's a small tab right here that we're gonna lift up with the tool to separate these two pieces. So we insert right here, lift up just a little bit on that tab, push with our other hand to release the gray panel. And your bulb is inside. And then we can actually separate these two pieces here to access the bulb. We're going to input the new LED, reassemble the gray housing back together, and then reinstall the plastic lens. And make sure you get that click sound and you know it's back together. Go ahead and put it back on the car. We're gonna reinstall the courtesy door panel light back onto the door panel. Now, the bulb that we're using was the premium non-polarity specific bulb. So when we installed earlier, we didn't have to worry quite so much about whether or not that light was in the correct orientation. We just knew it was gonna work. If you're using one of our standard LED bulbs, the 5050 SMD, um, you will wanna test, and if necessary, flip that bulb around in the housing to get them to turn on. Now that we have them back in place, remember the wiring came from the side closest to the end of the door and that side gets inputted first and the other side just clicks into place. For the rear dome light, we only have to remove this clear lens and not the actual assembly from the roof lighter. We're using the pointed wedge tool. There are two indentations, one here and one here, that are gonna allow us to pop open this panel. get access to the old halogen bulb. Now one side is a flexible piece of metal and when you push on it, it will release the old halogen bulb and we'll be replacing it with our own Festune LED. Once you have it in place, just test to make sure they turn on. You want to make sure that the LED boards are facing down, uh, and that way you get the best coverage. When you're putting this lens cover back on, the back tabs here line up against the back wall. Those go in first, and you want to give these a good hit. You hear that snap and that's how you know they're back in place. For the puddle lights here underneath your turn signals, we first need to remove the mirror to get access to two screws that let us take all the rest of these panels off to access the bulb underneath. Now, it's a good idea to start by moving your, your mirror all the way down so you have some space here to get in. You can take the fat end of this crowbar shaped tool, get behind, and just slowly work your way in with some fingers and eventually they pop right off. You do want to be pretty careful uh, if you use too much force and you don't take your time you do run the risk of breaking the mirror glass. The only good thing is it's a pretty cheap part to replace. Once we have There's also your heating element um, if your mirrors are heated that needs to come up as well. But as you can see, we're removing it from these four clips here and those are just held on by some pressure. So now what we need to do 
is actually remove these pieces. To do that, there are these small clips that are inside the housing here. So what we can see here, there is one white one right here. Then push in, pops out this panel. So there was a clip here and a clip here. I just kind of put pressure on this one to release this piece. In order to remove the bottom panel, there are actually two screws here and here that we now have access to. They're just a Phillips head screwdriver and we just need to remove these. All right, now that the screws are out, the easiest way to take this bottom panel off is actually to force this entire unit as far out as it will go. Start from this side here. Now, for this whole panel to come out, this side right here is the trickiest because it's angled against this curved edge. That's why it has to be all the way out like this. There's also these yellow wires here that you want to make sure are not clipped into this piece that we're taking off. There's one clip left right there. Now that we have it out, you can see right here, this is where that puddle light is. Just need to turn counterclockwise to release it. As you can see, we've already got one of our premium LEDs in there, but obviously, if it were a halogen bulb, you would just replace it. This one's not polarity specific, so it doesn't really quite matter which way you put it. But at this point in the process, you would want to go ahead and check to make sure that these turn on. Um, you can do that just by hitting the unlock button on the vehicle, on the vehicle remote. We already know this one works, so we're not going to have to test it, but I would highly recommend that you do before you reinstall. And then now we're just going to put this whole thing back together. Put the bulb in first. Same way it came in. Just we're gonna twist clockwise now to lock it in place. Swing it around so it's facing the direction it needs to go. This piece here, two clips here. Uh, you wanna put this fat end up against the metal or the end of the housing here. And just make sure that it clips into place. Just like that. And if you can see, it's these two bolts right here. These two clips right here. Once that's stabilized, the same way that this came off with this whole piece facing this direction, that's how you want to put it back on. You just want to come in from the bottom like this. Just want to make sure you line everything up as best as you can. Pushing from the back, everything should clip back, in, or clip back into place. And then you want to reposition these wires where you originally found them. Just like this. Alright. We have two bolts that need to go back in place. Now that we have the bolts back on, our white cover piece goes back onto place as well. If you take a look, these white tabs here go in at the bottom and they help line everything up. And you're just looking for that, or listening for that good snap sound to let you know that the tab has made contact and is back in place. There we go. The mirror, you want to make sure you connect 
the heating elements first. It'll be hard to see me reconnecting, but um, it doesn't matter what's positive or negative. Uh, it just needs a constant current to heat up the element inside the mirror. So we're just gonna plug them in as best we can. And once we get those on, essentially what I'm doing is lining up these four contact points with these rods and just applying pressure evenly across until I get all, all four to click into place. All right, so that's in place. That's one, two, For the rear trunk lights, we're going to be using a combination of tools. Now, we're going to start with the serrated knife tool, using the flat end of it on the side closest to the wall here. There is a metal clip um, on this side that we're going to wedge into and press on in order to get this housing to come out like this. And I'll show you that. You want to wedge in, fair amount of pressure down and pull out. And what you can see what I did here is I made sure that the tool clipped into this edge here and pushed down to release it from this housing here. Now to get access to this bulb, it's pretty simple. Just take your pointed wedge tool and all you're doing is removing it from the gray housing like that. Flip it over, do the same thing on this side. And there you go, you have access. Now, similar to the dome light, you have a pressure clip here. Push down on it, release the bulb. And we're gonna replace it with our new LED style bulb. Again, like the dome light, you want to make sure that the LEDs are pointing in the correct direction. And you're going to reinstall the clear lens. Clear lens just goes on, clips into place. And you want to make sure that this side with the wiring goes on first. And then you snap this one back in place. Now these are the non-polarity specific premium bulbs, so they should just turn on. You want to have it, I guess, on the door setting, so when this opens up, they actually come on. But you can touch to the on setting just to make sure they work. And that should be it. Moving on to the license plate lights here. We're going to switch out uh, the halogen bulb for an LED. All that we really need is a Phillips head screwdriver. There are two bolts holding each lens cap in place. We're just going to remove those. All right. Cool lens cap is off. Halogen bulb typically will come out just using your fingertips. If not, you can use that piece of tape or you can use a pair of pliers. These one came out pretty easy. Replacing it with the new LED bulb. We just place that clear lens cap back in place. And you'll notice there is one side that has a small guiding hole. That's how you know it's being put back together correctly. And then you're just going to screw it back into place. All right, let's go ahead and test to make sure they turn on. And as you can see, they're both working, and that should be it. I just want to show you guys real quick how to get access to your backup reverse lights on the Toyota 4Runner. Uh, Toyota makes it really easy to do that. Uh, there's just a small tab right here, really close to the assembly. Just gonna wedge in, slow your work your way up, panel comes out and you have your backup reverse light bulb here at the bottom. Turn clockwise. 
And as you can see, we already have an LED bulb in here, but you would just take the halogen bulb out, put your new LED in, insert that one back in, clockwise to reinstall. There are these two pieces here that go in first, and you just pop that panel back in place. And that's the end of the installation. If you have any questions or concerns, please email us at help at precisionled.com or you can reach us online and submit a support ticket at www.precisionled.com slash contact. Now, like we said before, please like or subscribe if you enjoyed the video or enjoy the process for what we do. It really does help us out when we make the next one knowing that there's people out there watching the videos. Have a good one.